about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bring it down to jet fire and reality is simple. Reality is simple. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move for me. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bring it down to jet fire and reality is simple. Nobody's being delivered from anything. God ain't doing nothing for nobody right now. That's me, I wonder why. Once again, I welcome y'all, and I'm here in St. Louis, in live and living color with my brother, Talik. <laughs> you know, once again, as I was speaking basically a little in part one about how other, you know, branches in the nation of Islam criticized this brother, as well as other people outside the nation of Islam and the conscious community that negatively also criticized this brother, you know, but see, they do more criticizing of this brother than they talk about the positive works that he's doing. And see, that's just, this is what's wrong with black people, you know, uh, generally on a whole broad scale. When it comes to, you know, critiquing or criticizing each other, particularly in this country as a people, you know, because we're not willing to accept the fact that there are those who really want to see a better day for us as dark skinned descendants of slaves here in America. And that's the bottom line. You know, and, uh, you know, Marvin Muhammad is one which he has admitted that he is not trying to, you know, seek a uh, celebrity fame or status like those such as uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know, all he wants to do is uh, carry out the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, in terms 
of doing for self. And that definitely is something that I can't see nothing wrong with. You know, maybe even though his ideology may be, you know, off key to, uh, you know, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But, you know, in, in this video, that's not up for debate nor is it up for commentary, you know, because like I said before in part one, that it doesn't really matter, you know, it doesn't even matter the fact that it's still a religion organization, you know, in which I've even voiced, you know, my uh point, even in making the comment section, under one of uh, Marvin Muhammad's videos that I'm not religious, but that the fact I still respect what him and the uh, New Nation of Islam is doing, which is definitely a big contrast, like I said earlier in part one, from what other groups in the Nation of Islam are doing when it comes to uh, adhering to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And one of those main primary uh, things is building and doing for self as a people, you know, because as it stands right now, you know, even with the billions of dollars, if not, or at least the millions of dollars that have went through the hands of Minister Louis Farrakhan, his, organiz his organization still ain't got nothing to show for even where their headquarters is located at in Chicago. I mean, and it definitely has not made any difference in the lives that's negatively impacted the black communities in Chicago, which we could see with the crime, you know, the gang violence, the killings, and all that stuff, you know, and, um, Marvin Muhammad is doing something very contrasting to where him and his followers are building a new reality in the part of Mississippi where they're uh, headquartered at as an, as an organization so that the reality for black people can be uh, different from what we see in Chicago what we see in Detroit, what we see in New York City, what we see in Buffalo, New York, Rochester, New York, what we see in Syracuse, New York, what we see in Newark, New Jersey, what we see in Cleveland, Columbus, Toledo, Cincinnati, Ohio, Louisville, Lexington, Kentucky, what we see in Omaha, Nebraska, what we see in St. Louis and Kansas City and Los Angeles and Oakland, you know, and, uh, Dallas and, you know, New Orleans and other urban hot spots where a lot of uh, dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America are located at, you know, in this country. And what Marvin Muhammad is doing is definitely a uh, setting example which cannot be shown or proven to exist in any other uh, group in the nation of Islam or even in the rest of the so-called black conscious community as of that matter. So, I mean, you know, those of you who disagree, I mean, hey, you could try to prove me wrong on this, but the reality of the whole situation of what I'm speaking on stands to exceed even with you trying to prove me wrong, if that's what you even intend on doing. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to prove me wrong. I mean, unless you could come up with some uh, miraculous, uh, you know, image <laughs> of what, like I say, the nation of Islam under the leaderships of Louis Farrakhan or Salas Muhammad or uh, Eric Muhammad at Temple 15 in Atlanta has done 
that comes near to the accomplishments that uh, Marvin Muhammad, a.k.a. Son of Man of the Nation of Islam, is uh, doing and towards making strides for the betterment of dark-skinned people who are descendants of slaves born in America. You know, so like I said, <laughs> I mean, all you got to do is show the proof in your works, not what you stand behind a rostrum and say, or what you quote from out of a book or out of a scripture. It's all about the works, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, and in this case, just like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say or taught, one have to stand on truth. And in this instance, I'm definitely standing on the truth in this matter, because this is definitely something that needs to get out, you know, and uh, like I said, you know. I, I went through the black conscious community, you know, uh, formerly being uh, associated with the Nuwabian nation, you know. So I know the difference. And when I see real progress and when I don't see real progress in terms of uh black consciousness or even foremost black liberation which is more important than anything else that will liberate us from our uh, nearly 500 year old uh, slave oppressors in this country you know so like I said uh, at the end of the day Marvin Muhammad is doing that work he's doing the work you know, like I said, you could go to his new Nation of Islam channel and it would show. You know, he's building uh he's building school, he's building businesses constantly. You know, uh and 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 and, and uh I mean basic things to sust to sustain self, you know, far as housing, clothing, and shelter, you know. I mean, what, 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 in food, as well as that goes along with basic necessities, and that's all it takes to live. It don't really take all this rich, lavishness to live, far as just basic living conditions for the human go on this planet. And, you know, I'm not saying it's anything wrong with having wealth but it's how it's distributed it's how it's uh you know uh spread it and in the nation of islam under minister lewis fair khan and solace muhammad and other groups in the nation of islam it's shown that that's not the case it's just a bunch of lip service and like i said Marvin Muhammad, a.k.a. Son of Man, is doing what it takes to carry out the teachings of Elijah Muhammad in terms of building, and which means uh, doing for self. So, I mean, you know, you could disagree with the brother and his uh, ideology and the way he teaches or whatever, but he's doing the work. Him and his followers is doing the work. I mean, he's doing what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about, you know, far as building and being able to be independent of the white man as far as doing for self and not have to worry to, worrying about or getting to the point, brother, of not worrying about how, you know, we going to be able to maintain a nine to five working for some white man every day or being able to just pay our bills, you know, which can cause a lot of stress, especially with the way, like I said in part one, because of how our people are living under the obstacles of this individualistic mentality, which permeates with us as a group of people 
called dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America, or whether you refer to yourselves as Asiatics, African Americans, Balayans, Hebrews, you know, Nuwabians, five percenters, but we all are up under that same umbrella at the same time as one group of people, which I rather choose to call dark skinned descendants, you know, of, sl of slaves born in America. But as I said before, you know, uh, Marvin Muhammad is doing the work. And uh, I have to commend him once again. I have to say I commend that brother in the new nation of Islam for doing what the rest of those other groups in the nation of Islam are not doing. And that's just a simple fact. You know, and what Louis Farrakhan is doing with his group, you know, especially by mixing the teachings with the, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with a racist name L with the teachings of a racist name L. Ron Hubbard is definitely not making things bad, but it's giving the nation of Islam more of a black eye, as we could see, even which is being talked about constantly throughout social media. <laughs> You know, once again, I welcome y'all, and I'm here in St. Louis, in live and living color with my brother, Talik. <laughs> and I left a comment uh, in one of uh, his video sections, under one of his videos uh, recently, and uh, he acknowledged it. And, uh, you know, I want to just say this, uh, you know, we here at the Reality Temple Ministries, uh, Operation Exodus Mississippi have also, you know, on the behalf of uh, our brother Talik, been in contact with Marvin Muhammad, which we may uh, be in the near future dialoguing with. And because of our campaign for the Operation Exodus of Mississippi, uh, what better way uh, to start than with uh, visiting, you know, the community uh, called the New Nation of Islam under Marvin Muhammad, which is located in Mississippi in a small town. I forget the name, but... Uh, However, um, we will be making contact, you know, uh, with this brother, you know, uh, which we are planning on doing soon. But uh, I would like to say that, um, you know, can't nobody really talk down on this brother. And uh, like I even said in that comment section of one of his uh, recent videos that I acknowledged on his uh New Nation of Islam channel um, that not even those who are in the Nation of Islam whether they are under Minister Louis Farrakhan, Salas Muhammad or whether they are under Eric Muhammad at Temple 15 in Atlanta, Georgia you know uh, or even whether they are up under uh, Minister Basir Muhammad you know, or Muhammad's Temple in uh, San Antonio, Texas, or in any other, uh, you know, group in the Nation of Islam. They can't really talk down on this brother, and I'm pretty sure those of some brothers and sisters in the Nation of Islam who may agree or disagree, but may be intelligent enough to acknowledge and understand what I'm saying, may at the same time agree in fact with what I'm saying. In regards to Marvin Muhammad, because it has been shown that actually the New Nation of Islam under his leadership is actually doing the work of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They're building, they're constantly building, you know, and I mean, they got a, a whole page, 
you know, uh, on their New Nation of Islam channel, which, uh, you know, illustrates this fact. So, you know, like I said, all you have to do is go to it for those of you that, in the, that are in other offshoots of the Nation of Islam or that's in the conscious community, period. You know, that, uh, you know, usually in a negative way criticize this brother. You know, because of the title he goes under as the son of man or whatever. Well, I have to agree uh, uh, that at one time I was the same way. You know, when I was especially in the conscious community and I was criticizing this brother for going under that title that he goes under as being the son of man or whatever, you know. But that don't matter. None of that really matters. Because he is getting work done down there. And uh, we here at the Operation Exodus Mississippi, uh, you know, or who are of this platform of Reality Temple Ministries on Earth, Operation Exodus Mississippi, you know, would love to start being connected with people like Marvin Muhammad in Mississippi that could definitely help us in our mission you know to get to our goal of what we're uh, attempting to do you know because I mean at the end of the day what he's doing uh, you know exemplifies what we're about basically here at this platform of Operation Exodus Mississippi you know far as uh, you know, being able to just have simple, uh, you know, conditions in ter terms of, you know, justice and equality when it comes to, you know, uh, decent living standards. You know, I ain't talking about living in no lavish, lavish mansions or nothing like Minister Louis Farrakhan and his family do, while the majority of his following behind him are struggling just to keep their bills paid or is just one uh, check away from being homeless you know and that kind of stuff including with other groups in the nation Islam like Silas Muhammad you know who will even desert, des, desert their followers who are in situations such, such as homelessness which I've come to find out in over recent time, you, you know, so like I said, Marvin Muhammad in the in the New Nation of Islam is trying to do some something so that in a common collective way, you know, our people will not have to depend on living individually in terms of worrying about how we gonna get the bills paid, how we going to, you know. Uh, you know, get other responsibilities taken care of when all we got to do is work in a common collective manner to do so, so that we won't have to be worried about that. You know, in this case, what Marvin Muhammad is doing is showing black people that we definitely do not have to keep living, you know, as individualists. Because living as individualists for so long has hurt us as a people anyway. Especially, you know, with the way that this so-called integration thing has impacted us since the civil rights movement. Why people feel like they just have to be uh, individuals and do everything individually, which is definitely turning against us it's constantly turning against us and we could see you know just look at the overall uh over proportionate homelessness of dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America you know and and I mean you know we need to you know go back to you know what we were in a positive manner even during the Jim Crow segregation days when we had no choice but to depend on each other. And I mean, you know, 
what Marvin Muhammad is doing, I mean, you know, is he's creating a situation where people ain't got to worry about housing, people ain't got to worry about clothing, food, and stuff like that, you know. Or like I said, worrying about how to keep the bills paid because everybody is working on a common collective basis in that organization to do what it takes. And, uh, you know, that means, you know, in terms with the uh, how they put in their money to use and donations to make this thing work with what they're doing down there in Mississippi which I can't do nothing but, uh, you know, commend Marvin Muhammad and his group far as doing, you know. But even though we need something more expansive, like taking the control of the politics of a whole state, so not only can that be possible, but all things could be possible with us in terms of ac accomplishing whatever we need. As a people, even if we want to do trade with Africa or other uh, darker skinned nations like in the Caribbean and make even, uh, you know, uh, contact in terms of dialoguing to become allies with these places, even with other places outside of America like Russia for what would not, you know, I mean, we could do all that. We we ain't got to worry about businesses and none of that other stuff. Once we could take over a state such as Mississippi where all them things could be possible and where, you know, uh, the racists would not just easily be able to get in the way as far as uh, trying to, you know, deter us from such progress, you know, as what's going on throughout the rest of America, you know. And so this is the reality that we're pushing for so that we could create this such quarantine reality in the state of Mississippi, you know, away from uh, the rest of America, where our people is constantly suffering and can't do the things we need to do to, pro to progress as a people. You know, because of uh, so many uh, stumbling blocks being put in our way. You know, but like I say, in spite of all, I still must commend Marvin Muhammad, you know, for doing what he's doing. I mean, he has established a very well stable community down there in Mississippi, you know, far as the new nation of Islam is concerned. And, I see that his uh, followers who are located in Detroit, Michigan, are even, you know, doing work, you know, to help him along with his goal in building, you know. So I commend that organization as a whole, you know. And uh, like I say, you know, can't no one really talk down on them. Like I say, not even those in the Nation of Islam under Farrakhan, Salas Muhammad or Eric Muhammad or you know what I'm saying, or uh, even uh, Levi Kareem, who's a minister based in Detroit, you know, with a, uh, you know, be a temple following, you know, they can't even talk about Marvin Muhammad. I mean, Marvin Muhammad is actually doing what they're not doing as far as what they're supposed to be doing, according to the teachings of Muhammad, or Elijah Muhammad, rather to say you know, which is doing for self, you know, where they ain't got to constantly be, uh, you know, working a nine to five, you know, for the Caucasian, like most of these uh, groups in the nation of Islam are still doing today. Marvin Muhammad is doing what it takes to make it possible so that at least his followers won't have to you know, uh, be kept in that type of situation. And that's the way that is looking in terms of how they're building in Mississippi. You know, and like I said, all you got to do is go to their New Nation Islam page 
you know, far as their progress is concerned and see what's going on. I mean, they're making gains down there. And uh, I would definitely be looking forward to getting in contact with Brother Marvin Muhammad and his organization, along with our brother of Reality Temple Ministries on Earth, Talik. You know, so that we could forge a dialogue with them because they are doing the work of what it takes so that we can be liberated as a people and to be able to do for ourselves. <laughs> You know, once again, I welcome y'all, and I'm here in St. Louis, in live and living color with my brother, Talik. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Brother Talib of Reality Temple Ministries here on Earth. Uh, I'm an assistant to uh, Brother Talik. Uh, a reality temple ministries here on earth uh, in Operation Exodus, Mississippi. I would like to talk about our experience, you know, in this live chat video. You know, as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. You know, and what I see as far as what's going on with us at this time you know, and what we're dealing with as a people in this country, you know, we must wake up and understand that we don't really have too much time left. You know, as I said before in other uh, previous videos, like the short ones I made this evening, just not too long ago, we can't keep playing with our liberation struggle. I mean, you know, these Caucasian Europeans here in America have a plan for us, you know, called FEMA camps and uh, mass graves. And like I said, all you got to do is go on YouTube, Google it, and research this information for yourself. You know, this is very, you know, uh, undisputed factual information. And when they get ready to execute this plan, we of all people are going to be the first ones on the chopping block. Yes, their people, far as Caucasians and other different races of people in this country, is going to be affected in the same way at any right given time in this nation when things really start getting crazy in terms of uh, the turmoil or the politics that's even going on now with this nation. But we're going to be the first ones to be headed for the slaughter. Like all the time throughout our history as a people in this country, which has been over 400 years of slave servitude and oppression and lynching and mass incarceration along with Jim Crow and all that, you know. And, um, we, you know, when we look at what's been going on with us in terms of uh, the uh, drug epidemic, like with the heroin and crack, uh, you know, time errors in terms of the drug, drug epidemic in this country, which has been systematically uh, aimed at us directly. You know, although we see that this plan by our slave oppressors has backfired on his own people, you know, which is prompting them to come up with more uh, strenuous, uh, stricter drug laws and stuff because they find many of their people addicted to these drugs, especially like meth and other stuff you know, that's uh, hurting them and, their com and, and also affecting their communities. Well, see, they did not think that this was going to, uh, 
you know, affect them. They thought it was just going to stay restricted in the dark skin community. You know, but as we see, that's not the case. You know, and uh, like I said, that plan was to ultimately destroy us all together. You know, in terms of uh, in as individuals, as families, and as just groups of people, period. You know, all together, that was aimed at destroying us. And it is done a proportionate good job in destroying us as a community and as well as a as a group of people itself but with this thing called fema camps you know and, and uh mass graves like i said with all these uh concentration camps that they've set up you know where they could get us at you know, and do what they really want to do with us as far as throwing us in these mass graves and ended it and ended this once and for all so they won't have to never worry about us again as a people, period, you know, is a reality. I mean, all we got to do is look at the politics in this country, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, like I said, we have to understand and realize that, you know, if we really truly want to be free as a people, you know, from all the abuses that we suffer daily in this country as dark-skinned people are concerned, uh, you know, as far as when it comes to police brutality, when it comes to, you know, mass incarceration in modern day other forms of Jim Crow that's going on with us. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, get on board this soul train of Operation Exodus Mississippi by taking control of a state in terms of its politics so that we can create a new reality for ourselves as a people and for our future generations that won't know nothing about what it is to be stereotyped as a Negro or, you know, what it is to be discriminated against. They won't know nothing about slavery or Jim Crow or none of that because we would be preparing a reality for them that would totally even wipe the thought of that existence away from their mind where they won't even have um you know the clue or even knowing what that is you know we want to be able to make this uh mission successful in that way only if we put aside our petty differences and our crazy thoughts you know and stop being fake if we truly want to be free as a people. Because I said earlier tonight in this other video I just made that I'm tired of the uh, fakery going on and our liberation struggle. Even with this platform of Operation uh, Exodus Mississippi. And truly I'm glad that, you know, we have had to clear some things up before this uh, plan even gets up off the ground. Because imagine if this plan was in motion of being up off the ground and being put motionally into uh, being manifested as a game for us to reach our objective. Imagine what complications and conflicts it would really be if we had all these fake people that we had to deal with you know in this struggle for our liberation in terms of this platform of operation exodus mississippi which is our uh last hope shot which i'm gonna just have to be real and giving it to you that way 
this is our last hope shop. We've tried the civil rights movement. We've tried, uh, you know, these other pro-black organizations and religions, which has not worked for us. You know, uh, we've tried everything that we could think of in our history as a people and have still failed at it because of incompetency, because of incompetent leadership, you know. But today, with this platform of Operation Exodus Mississippi, uh, you know, we could turn this around and create a whole total different new reality that would bring us to freedom, justice, and equality for once and for all as dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America. You know, so like I said, you know, we're going to really have to, uh, you know, decide if we really want to be free. I mean, it's just that simple. We're going to have to decide if we truly want to be free. If we want to be free of all this madness. You know, we, we're going to have to just stop the buffoonery. You know, I mean, because I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to give up on our people and I'm not going to give up on our people. You know, it would, it would be against my own conscience or what I stand for to do something like that. But at the end of the day, um, assuming because of it being so hard to bring us together as a people, on a common collective level to do anything that's going to bring us to liberation, freedom. Um, like I said in the previous video, I may have to, uh, you know, do some things that, you know, a lot of our people don't agree with. Because truly, you know, I don't want to be around a bunch of niggas. You know, see, it's a difference between people of soul and niggas. And I don't want to be around a bunch of niggas. You know, you could call it, you know, oh, you want to go around the white folks or you want to go hear that. Well, I tell you what, I don't want to be around no niggas. It don't serve no purpose being around a bunch of Negroes that want to live like slaves all their life. And that's just a point. That's just a point blank uh, way of me, uh, you know, taking this direction, you know. And uh, I have legitimate reasons to feel this way as a lot of our people who have because they want a better way of life for themselves and their families when it comes to safety. Just when it comes to living, you know, uh, under the umbrella of some type of form of uh, serenity. Because around a bunch of niggas, you know, the reality is, is that we just not going to get that among ourselves as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. Because of all this infighting among ourselves, along with the violence, the killings, the jealousy, the envy, which is among, you know, other reasons why we simply just can't come together and do something to make a better day for ourselves and our future generations. If it even is a future generation from among us as a group of people, because of what these uh, Caucasians plan on doing to us, far as hauling us off to these FEMA camps and mass graves. Since they've uh, obviously saw that other forms of destruction that they've uh, created as a condition for us has not fully worked and their plan to totally destroy us, well, that's the last thing that's on the horizon that they plan on doing to get rid of us for once and for all. Since all else that they've tried, even including chattel slavery, didn't work in terms of that. 
you know, because once they drop us in those mass graves, the reality is, is that's it. And that's why I say at this point, for us to kind of act that, Operation Exodus Mississippi is our last hope shot. Brothers and sisters of soul. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, we could keep playing games with ourselves about wanting true liberation, justice and equality from our 400 year oppressor or, uh, you know, we could get on board and get real with this and make something happen for ourselves and our people, which we deserve and stop playing these games. You know, I mean, I want to be honest, you know, yes, it hurts me to know that we have people among us as so-called leaders, as so-called pro-blackity black individuals and organizations that is uh, using that as a platform to falsely benefit financially off the sufferings of our people's struggle in this country, you know, which of course uh, shows that they're no different from the Caucasian when it comes to benefiting off our suffering in any type of gainful way that's going to benefit them, especially far as personal uh, wise go with self as well as individual families, like in the case of Louis Farrakhan like in the case of L. Sharpton, you know, and people like Saza Ali, you know, and Dr. Umar Johnson, and the list goes on. But you know, at the end of the day, we can't blame them. We got to blame ourselves for giving them our resources, knowing that they constantly keep playing us for food. You know, that's just like you going to the dope man and you getting fake dope and you're not getting the real quality of dope that goes along with what is worth your money that you spending it for and you steadily getting played like a fool with well, that's the same thing with this blackity black conscious stuff you know which I'm gonna just keep keep it flat out 1000 with you on you know we can't blame nobody but ourselves for that. You know. And at the same time, accuse these people of doing what they're doing to us. Yes, it's wrong. But we keep giving our resources and our money to them. So, hey, we need to just, those of us who keep complaining need to just sh shut up you know, and take your abuse like a man and woman. Unless you really want to, you know, get with the real program, which has undisputedly been proven to be the only way left for us to really gain any true future in terms of liberation. Because no one has came to our platform and refuted our ideals concerning this platform of Operation Exodus Mississippi. No one has shown any form of disagreeing with our ideal concepts on this mission that we are attempting to carry out from this platform. So like I said, you know, that, and that should tell those something who disagree with it. That should really tell them something as well. You know, so in other words, you have a choice to get on this platform of Operation Exodus Mississippi, a die slave, die nigger, and whatever else that comes along with that label term called nigger. You know, it's just that simple. You know, and, and it's, it's really no time to keep playing games. Like I said before, that's why I don't have time with fakeness. 
flip floppity type individuals and all the other buffoonery that comes along with that. I'd rather just deal alone and be by myself or with those few that's with this same uh, ideal and platform of which I speak and stand on. Then to be dealing with a bu bunch of fakery, you know, because, you know, I'm not, first of all, I'm not here on social media to make no personal friends, just to be, just to have somebody to be dealing with on some type of personal level that's aimless. You know, I came to this platform because I wanted to help reach out to my people because I see how we suffering every day. And I'm very passionate about this. You know, and I know some may take me the wrong way, but hey, you know what? Like one brother say, we all ain't got to like each other to get a goal accomplished. You know, so like I said, you don't have to like me in order to make this dang work called Operation Exodus Mississippi. You don't have to like Brother Talik, who I'm an assistant to, to make this reality happen for us and our people so that us and our future generations can have a better future for once and for all, away from this, uh, you know, oppressive captivity that we still find ourselves being under after over 400 years. You know, so like I say, we, we, we have to stop playing these games and get serious or accept the consequences that come along with all this, like with racist police blowing our heads off anytime they see fit at the right time of opportunity or us being lynched somewhere at the right opportunity of time being fit. I mean, you know, this is not no game. These races is at work doing what they do and doing what they always been doing. Including other people, groups of people that don't like us. You know, and I won't touch on that too in a minute. But, uh, you know, because of the fact that we do not have no solid unity or any type of solid unity foundation among us as a people is what gives these people justification to do what they do to us, far as the mistreatment, the discrimination. You got the Mexicans, the Koreans, and other so-called Hispanic groups who we consider as our brown brothers. <laughs> you know, they treat us just as worse as the Caucasian do. You see it. I mean, look what's been happening. How them Koreans and them Chinese been getting away with beating the hell out of our women. You know, in these nail salon shops around the country. And we just stand by and let them get away with it. Let us do that to one of they women and see what the uh, contrast and results will be. I mean, this is not no game. We don't have no respect as a people. We don't have no respect from nobody. Not in this country or anywhere else in the world. But while we steadily getting, you know, ostracized and oppressed by other people in this country, we steadily keep fighting and killing each other over petty trivial reasons then you wonder why other dark-skinned descendants of slaves choose to move out of black neighborhoods into white neighborhoods or into other different neighborhoods where they got to go seek protection to feel safe around other people that don't look like them 
and that don't care nothing about them. Now that's backwards, but that's a part of the reality because of how we mistreat ourselves. And I don't think none of us as a people should be even subjected to that, even when it comes to terms of moving to other cities and other states to get away from a uh, mostly black concentrated populations, areas of this country, just to feel safe from crime and all that. Like I've myself thought about doing even you know, in this coming future, if this thing with Operation Exodus Mississippi don't work. But see, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You know, I do not want to do that. And truthfully, I may not do that. But deep down inside, it's a part of me that want to. Just not to even want to have nothing to do with our people because of the ignorance of our people. Not because of the self-hatred, as y'all, some of y'all makes call it, but because of the total ignorance that our people is so entrenched in that make a lot of us not want to be around each other, that want to take our families and go off someplace else to get away from us. That's how degenerate and savage we became. And this is the reason why I cannot blame no other dark skin descendant who feels that way exactly. I've said this before time and time and I stand on that. But other than that, I still have the love and passion for my people to want to see change for us all as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. And because we deserve it. We deserve to be free from oppression like any other group of people on the face of this planet. We deserve that. This was, and this is what primarily this campaign called Opera Operation Exodus Mississippi is all about. Regardless of your sexuality, your financial status, you know, uh, if you marry even outside of your race, whether you married to a Caucasian or Asian or Hispanic or, you know, you got uh, mixed kids, bound, it don't matter. Long as you a dark skinned descendant of a slave born in America, you, well as me, and us all, who are descendants of, dark-skinned descendants of slaves in Amer born in America, deserve to be free from this oppression that we've suffered for so long, for over 400 years, by this slave massa. So like I said, we're going to have to really buckle down and get real. Do we want to be free? Or do we want to die as slaves? 